My name is Bill Hawkins. I'm one of the pancreatic cancer surgeons here at Warren's Hospital in Washington University. And I've been asked to review uh, the Whipple operation. Many of my patients has a have asked for this uh, to be somewhere because it's a lot of information that I'd like to uh, uh, be able to go back for it and see it on occasion. So um, the uh, Whipple operation is a complicated operation that is done for pancreatic adenocarcinoma, or tumors at the head of the pancreas, but also for some other indications. And I'll start by drawing the pancreas, which is a guppy-shaped organ, which sits right against your back and your abdomen. And uh, it can be quite sneaky because tumors can grow quite large in this area without calling attention to themselves. Um, tumors commonly or most commonly arise in the head of the pancreas, this being the head and that being the tail. Um, and a lot of times we find out about them because they block other structures. For example, the bile duct comes down and goes right near this area. And when this is blocked, that's why a patient will sometimes develop uh, yellow eyes, the so-called jaundice. Uh, the pancreatic duct travels in this uh, area as well, and sometimes patients can lose a lot of weight because the pancreatic duct is blocked, and then they have trouble getting their digestive enzymes. And uh, when they don't get their digestive enzymes, they don't absorb all their food quite so well. The stomach passes down through this area, like so, and this stomach turns into the first part of the small bowel called a duodenum. And this pancreas and duodenum are adjacent to each other, and these ducts connect the pancreatic juice with the bile juice and the food so that all the food can be digested. In this little two centimeter area is a lot of important structures, including the blood vessels that go to and from the liver and the blood vessels that come up and down from the heart to supply all the intestines with um, blood supply. The Whipple operation involves removing the head of the pancreas and all of these shared blood supplies and shared structures. So if we remove the head of the pancreas, we're going to take a little piece of the stomach here, a little piece of this bile duct, the pancreatic neck, and the small bowel. And so this is the operation that comprises the, uh, the head of the pancreas or the pancreatic or duodenectum. Uh, we also often remove the gallbladder because it plugs into this bile duct here, and uh, we need to get that uh, out of the way as well, otherwise it wouldn't connect to anything. So when all is said and done, we have the bile duct hanging in the breeze. We have the pancreas, which has been cut in half. So we have the sawed-off end of the pancreas. And then we have the stomach, which comes down. And we need to be able to eat. And so what we do is we connect the pancreas with the bile duct, with the stomach, in something that looks like this loop-de-loop. -loop. That way the pancreas juice mixes with the bile juice, which mixes with the food. Uh, this operation takes about four hours to do, so in the OR, four hours. In the hospital, usually a little bit more than a week. Um, the operation is quite complicated, and as you can imagine, it's not something that we do mostly on 20-year-olds. Many of the patients who have either pancreas cancer or other cancers are older. The average age for us is about 68. Um, so when you're doing something that's this invasive, that re involves so much remodeling, um, you can expect to see some of the complications that are common for other operations, like heart attacks or pneumonias or blood clots in the leg. But there are also some special complications associated with this operation. And the one that is particularly plaguing is to get a leak of digestive juices, usually near this pancreatic anastomosis. And the reason that happens is, even though we do our very best to hook these things together, the reason we can get a leak is that digestive organ is dumping its digestive juices right at that area. And so there's a competition between healing and a little bit of breakdown of that tissue through digestion, which results in uh, an infection. So this infection, if it happens, will delay your hospitalization, delay your uh, moving on. But we can usually treat it just by putting a drain in that area. And then the body will normally, over time, seal around that drain, scar down, and heal that leak. The um, recovery from this operation takes about um, a good month. And in that time, uh, you'll initially struggle to eat a little bit with um, a few pounds of weight loss. Uh, from the last 100 patients that we looked at, the average weight loss was somewhere between 12 and 16 pounds. Um, then patients will start to learn to appreciate their new anatomy and, and develop a better appetite. Um, there's a complication of diabetes. You really only need to have about 10% of your pancreas uh, not to be a diabetic, and we only move, remove about a third of your pancreas. But there's a lot that goes on with the pancreas when the, when the um, 
pancreas is blocked so that scar tissue forms and some of those insulin producing cells uh, can die. And so all in all, we make about one third of the patients who we do this operation on become a diabetic if they weren't already a diabetic beforehand. If that happens, we treat you with, uh, with some insulin or that sort of thing as needed. Um, the other common unique complication in this operation is that the pancreas doesn't do a good job of giving you enough enzyme to digest your food. And so some patients, about a quarter of the patients, need to be on some supplemental enzymes, which do the same job as the pancreas in helping you to digest your food, and we give those to you as pills. Um, the operation, um, the chance of getting a complication is about 40%. But even though you get complications uh, from this operation, the chance of dying from this operation in experienced centers and experienced hands is very low. And nationally, at one of the major uh, teaching centers, this number is now less than 2%. So a lot of improvements have been made in this operation over time.